Right now at 6 o'clock, Israel under attack, forces fighting back against a deadly attack by Hamas militants, what the U.S. is doing to pledge support. Also ahead, what the Bristol community is doing to honor the legacy of a police officer who was killed in the line of duty one year ago. Also ahead this morning, more auto workers could be going on strike, but not from Detroit's Big Three, which group now joining the labor effort for a different reason. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good Monday morning. Thanks so much for choosing to be with us at 6 here on Fox 61 and Fox 61 Plus, America Areas. I'm Keith McGill. Very grateful you're here. Whether you're joining us uh, on no matter the platform, I want to get you caught up in the forecast. A bit of a chilly, not chilly, but a brisk fall walk in for me this morning, I Rachel. Call it chilly. I would argue yeah. chilly. Okay, fair enough. I, I was wearing a coat. Yeah, I mean, I definitely had the sweatpants and the sweatshirt on this morning when I left my house. It was very chilly this morning, and it still is. 46 degrees, mostly clear conditions over in Hartford now with winds out of the south, five miles per hour. There we go, 39 degrees in Danbury. I was waiting for somebody to drop down to the upper 30s. About 39 in Danbury, but 46 in Hartford, 41 in Willimantic, and 51 degrees towards the Elm City this morning. So mostly sunny skies today are expected. A few passing clouds in the afternoon. There could be a stray shower or sprinkle towards the afternoon too, but I think for the most part, it's a relatively quiet week with limited rain chances and temperatures really close to where we should be for this time of year or just slightly below it. So for today, 60 61 to about 63 degrees will be our temperature spread with overnight lows back into the 40s. A few more passing clouds on Tuesday, a sprinkle chance there too. Mid 60s expected and then on Wednesday, Wednesday looks to be the warmest out of the next couple with temperatures up around 68 to near 70 degrees. And then as we approach this upcoming weekend, you guessed it, there's a rising chance for some rain. So we'll detail that out for you coming up in just a bit. But it is 602 and we want to get a check out on those roads this morning. Let's take you over to here and we'll show you over in Mill for now we do have uh, areas towards about uh, exit 40 the 95 southbound and also in the northbound side too uh, we have road work that has wrapped up for the morning commute a live look outside over in Meriden now where we do have some road work that's still out there just out by 91 exits about 18 backing this up here 18 to about 20. So we do have some lanes blocked on that northbound side. So it is going to be a slow go from New Haven to Hartford at 38 minutes. Hartford to New Haven, it's 32 on the southbound side. So that looks good. Again, another live look outside over in Meriden now. Where it's a slow go there, but otherwise no incidents to report at this hour, guys. Rachel, thanks so much. Uh, what a weekend it has been for breaking news as we continue to follow these developments out of the Middle East for days now, some two days. We've seen all kinds of deadly violence unfolding. It has continued into the early morning hours now with breaking news this morning that the death toll continuing, as I mentioned, to rise overseas as new waves of rocket attacks hit in Israel and Gaza. And this all follows the surprise attack on Israel by the Palestinian militant group Hamas. Fox 61's Lindsay Kane joining us here in the studio with the latest now. Lindsay, good morning. Hi, good morning. Well, Israel's military now says it has retaken control of all communities around Gaza, but new reports say Palestinian rockets are heading into Jerusalem this morning. This comes 48 hours after the initial attack, which so far has killed more than 1,000 people. The Palestinian minute. I am asking for the whole world to see what I am going through. We have to bring the children home and as fast as possible. Launched a surprise attack on Israel Saturday, firing thousands of rockets and sending fighters from the Gaza Strip. Israel responded by declaring war and firing retaliatory airstrikes, destroying buildings and infrastructure. Hamas says it has taken hundreds of Israeli hostages, including children, families and Israeli army officers. U.S. officials say at least four Americans have been killed in Israel and several are missing. Family members of those missing are pleading with the Israeli government to help find their loved ones. Meanwhile, I am asking for the whole world to see what I am going through. We have to bring the children home and as fast as possible. And here at home, President Joe Biden is offering his Israel support. The U.S. is sending Navy ships and military aircraft closer to Israel this morning. Now, the death toll continues to rise as well as for those who are injured. So stick with us all morning long on Fox 61 and on Fox 61 Plus for the very latest as it all unfolds. We'll send things back over to you. All right. Thank you, Lindsay. 
Well, meantime this morning, the Pilots Union for American Airlines is calling on members to refuse to fly to Israel. The union says this is because of the uncertainty of the newly declared war in that region. It says flights should not resume until the pilots can be reasonably assured of the region's safety and security. Happening today in West Hartford, community members expected to gather for a vigil 4 o'clock this afternoon. The vigil will be held on the steps of the West Hartford Town Hall. Organizers saying it's in support of Israel and for people to pray that the violence does not spread as the result of the war. Members of the state's Jewish community gathering at the Benai Israel of Southbury last night to stand in solidarity with the people of Israel. Several organizations coming together to pray for peace. We felt that we should not wait at all and that we should come together and as a community uh, process our feelings right now and uh, share our presence one with the other. We stand steadfastly with Israel and we, we support them in any way we can. Clearly emotions there and again that vigil happening this afternoon, a second one at the West Hartford Town Hall, 4 o'clock. Ahead at 6.30, we have more on how local lawmakers are reacting to the attacks overseas. To stay on top of the latest developments out of Israel and any breaking news closer to home, get the Fox 61 News app for the latest on breaking news and weather. It has been almost a year since two Bristol police officers were shot and killed in the line of duty. And even now, the community still finding ways to support each other while dealing with loss. Yeah, Fox News Brooke Griffin is live at the Bristol Police Department with the story. Brooke, good morning. Yeah, good morning to both of you. This Thursday does mark that one year since the Bristol Police Department lost Sergeant Alex Hamsey and Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte. Now, we did get a chance to speak with Hamsey's family over the weekend. They say that each day is really just about managing their grief the best they can and just trying to get through this still. Now, over the weekend, one of his family members wanted to do something to remember her cousin's legacy. This is in addition to the dozens of events to support the police department and the officer's families over the past 12 months. Gabby Hamsey, Alex's cousin, started a fundraiser for the Sergeant Hamsey Memorial Fund. The family is selling luminary bags. Those are illuminated bags that people can display on their porch or in a window. Hamsey says the money raised from the sale will be donated to various charities, organizations, and scholarships of her family's choosing. She has already sold around 400 memorial bags for $3 each, raising at least $1,000 so far. When asked how her and her family are doing, she said they're always trying to stay positive managing as best as we can um, the year has been tough but with the outpouring love and support coming from Bristol and you know places all over the state it's just it helps it really does and if you would like to show your support for both the Bristol Police Department and, of course, these families as well this week as we come up on Thursday, you can do so a few different ways. You either can purchase one of those luminary bags at the Hamsey Law Firm here on Farmington Avenue in Bristol, or you can even just attend the candlelight vigil here at the Bristol Police Department on Thursday. That's going to be open to everyone, and it starts at 7 p.m. Live in Bristol, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Brooke, thanks so much for the update there. We'll check back throughout the morning. Well, meantime, police in North Brantford are searching for the man who they say tried to steal a car from a driveway. This picture here was shared by detectives. It shows a black Dodge Charger. That's the alleged getaway car that they say the man and his accomplices used in this incident. Police say when the homeowner interrupted the burglar, one of the accomplices uh, in the vehicle fired a shot at the homeowner. Unfortunately, no one was hurt. Police are asking that if you recognize the vehicle, please give them a call. Happening today in Hartford, there will be a welcoming mass for the incoming Hartford Archbishop Christopher Coyne. It's set for 2 o'clock this afternoon at the Cathedral of St. Joseph in the capital city. Over the summer, Pope Francis chose Archbishop Coyne to take over the Archdiocese next year. Now he's coming by way of Burlington, Vermont, where he oversaw the Catholic Church there. You can find my full set down interview with the new Archbishop, Fox61.com. And as for that mass, you can watch it live this afternoon at 2 on our sister station, the CW20. Today in Derby, people are getting ready to celebrate Italian Heritage Day, paying tribute to the legacy of Italians in America. The ceremony is starting at 11 this morning at 73 High Street. 
It's going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance and National Anthem, followed by the raising of the Italian flag. And then it's going to end with a tribute to Italians in America. Nawash Village in South Windsor is hosting an Indigenous Peoples Day celebration today from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Highlights of the event include food, demonstrations, musical performances, and also a guided tour of the Connecticut River.